There's many commonly asked questions in the COD Zombies community, but the one that comes up the most is who was the most influential zombie player. Despite being asked thousands of times, there hasn't been a definitive answer, mostly varying from person to person. Although, there's a few names that come up fairly often, one of which is a relaxing end, an unboxing YouTuber who stopped uploading zombies content half a decade ago. However, his name is still relevant in the zombies community to this day, mostly because of how good he was at zombies in the early days and also making zombie high rounds more relevant. Furthermore, it wasn't just high round players who made an impact. On the more casual side of the community, you had zombie YouTubers such as Mr. T Lexify, The Smith Plays, Noah J456, and many more who made entertaining videos which kept the community thriving as well as being able to meet and talk to the developers of zombies. Although none of these players come close to arguably the most influential and game-changing zombies player who is named Magic Globox, a name which 99% of the community has never heard of. So who is Magic Globox? Why was he so influential as zombies? And how come almost no one has heard of him? The year is 2009, a year in which World at War was thriving and also introduced the Zombies game mode for the first time. This would be the year where many influential zombie players started playing, as well as Magic Globox, who was introduced to World at War Zombies by his brother on the PlayStation 3. Over time, he and his brother would play split-screen zombies, eventually causing Globox to grow a liking to the game mode. In fact, Globox loved the game mode so much, he would start playing soul zombies to increase his skill, specifically on the map Nocturne Toten, which he achieved round 86. This would remain his best game played in zombies until the release of Black Ops 1 in November of 2010. However, instead of buying the game, Goldbox would get a cracked version of Black Ops. The reason for this is unknown, but what we do know is he achieved round 72 in early 2010, and then 115 in March of 2011 on the map Kino der Toten. These games were extremely impressive, especially considering the map wasn't released too long ago. Furthermore, these two games could have been considered a world record at the time, but since Goldbox played on a cracked version of Black Ops 1, he was playing on the oldest version, which wasn't allowed for records. The reason for this is because the first version of Black Ops Zombies allowed players to reload a weapon called the Thunder Gun. If you don't know, the Thunder Gun is a gun which deals infinite damage, allowing players to kill zombies on any round. This is crucial information to know because the Thunder Gun was so powerful when the game launched, the developers made it so players could not reload the weapon until they exhausted the entire clip of ammo in the next version. The reason why they removed this feature is players would always have two shots or up to four shots in the clip of the weapon if they upgraded it. This allowed escaping situations much easier as you could spam the weapon by reloading. Because many players played with the new changes to the Thunder Gun, Goldbox would eventually buy Black Ops 1 and all of the released DLC in late 2011 on his PC. Unfortunately, this is where Goldbox's story halts. It wasn't until summer of 2012, Goldbox would discover a player that would change his zombie's career entirely. That player's name was King Jack. King Jack was a fairly talented player in the early days of Zombies, achieving many high round world records. However, what he is most known for is his quest for the first round 200 on Black Ops 1. This intrigued Globox as nobody had attempted to reach such a high round on this game, let alone had the skill to do it. Matter of fact, King Jack would start his grind on Kino and break the world record multiple times, eventually reaching round 199, just one round away from 200. This was very unfortunate for King Jack as he had to change maps and restart his journey. However, because of King Jack's journey, he would unknowingly inspire Globox to reach high rounds. 
It wasn't until October of 2012, Gulbox would finally get his breakthrough in the zombies community by achieving round 176 on Keynote or Tone, making this the first time he reached insta-kill rounds on any map. On top of that, he would run a new insta-kill strategy named Ali Instas. The name of the strategy explains itself. The player camps in the alleyway of Kino and kills the zombies whenever it's an insta-kill round. If you don't know how insta-kill rounds work, that's fine. The only thing you need to know is they occur after round 163 and usually happen every other round. This is allowed for record attempts because it's a bug that occurs in the code and since these rounds happen every time a player reaches round 163 and higher, that makes insta-kill rounds legitimate for record runs as a player has no control over them. Because of this, many new insta-kill round strategies such as alley instas would be created so players can play faster. Moreover, this was the early days of COD Zombies. Almost every single strategy made in 2012 is now obsolete in modern day zombies. Although, Goldbox's alley insta-kill strategy still remains the fastest way to play instas if you're playing with Nova Crawlers on Keynote or Tone. Because his insta-kill strategy was so fast, Goldbox would start his round 200 attempts on Kino in early 2013, but not without some issues. You see, surviving up to round 200 was extremely difficult. The reason why it was so difficult is because of a thing called a reset. Essentially, if a player survives a specific amount of time on the map, such as 70 hours, the game will reset back to round 1. This is what makes zombie high rounds a speedrun and forces players to play faster and use more difficult strategies to achieve a higher round, which is what Goldbox did with his insta-kill strategy. Due to this, Goldbox's chance of reaching round 200 increased by a slight amount. All he had to do now was survive long enough, and he did by a long shot. Goldbox didn't just achieve round 200, he achieved 209, making this the first ever round 200 on Black Ops 1, and also beating the previous record by 10 rounds. On top of that, he achieved this record without going down once, which is incredible. Because this was the first ever round 200, Goldbox would unsurprisingly peak in popularity within the zombies community. Although, this popularity would not remain for long. The reason for the diminishing popularity is due to the zombies community. To be more specific, the era in the zombies community. Goldbox achieved this in March of 2013, which is right in the middle of what some consider the golden age of COD Zombies. So, if this era was considered the golden age, then how could Goldbox lose popularity? Well, COD Zombies was and still is very casual base. In fact, some regard it as a non-competitive game mode. Because many considered Zombies non-competitive, almost all high rounders did not receive the attention they deserved, eventually becoming a rarely talked about person in the community, or worse, becoming completely forgotten about. This fortunately did not happen at Glowbox, but it was evident after achieving the first round 200, his popularity quickly diminished. Though, that did not stop him from going for world records. Just one month after achieving the first round 200, Goldbox would start grinding 5 and attempt to break the world record. Sadly, many of Goldbox's early attempts were not documented, but what we know is he achieved round 120, the third highest round achieved by anyone on the map. Amazingly, Goldbox wasn't done. At the end of April, he would achieve round 164 on Ascension and round 160 on 5, both of which crashed because of his graphics card. To be more specific, the error he got was out of video memory. Also, he crashed the same way in his round 209 Keynote or Toten game. The error he got in these three games meant the graphics card he was using failed on him. The only way for him to fix his issue was to buy a new graphics card. But there was just one problem. Goldbox wasn't rich. So if he wanted to get a new graphics card, he would have to save a fair amount of money, 
which would obviously take a while. Despite not being able to afford a new graphics card for potentially months, Goldbox would actually encourage himself to play more zombies and achieve higher rounds to beat his personal bus. Eventually doing so in July of 2013, achieving round 174 on Ascension, just 12 rounds off the world record. Sadly, just like the previous three runs, this run also aired thanks to its graphics card. Thankfully, this run did not become pointless because Globox once again discovered a new insta-kill strategy, this time in the MPL area on Ascension. The way the strategy worked is a player such as Globox would camp below Juggernog and keep the door to spawn close. This was arguably the first true insta-kill strategy on the map. All a player had to do was camp below Juggernog and buy MPL ammo, allowing for safe and very fast insta-kill rounds. Also, this wasn't the last insta-kill strategy made. Just one month later, he would reach round 163 on 5, which, once again, erred. But, he would also make a new insta-kill strategy. Instead of running King Jack's insta-kill strategy, which used traps and killing zombies erratically in the map, Goldbox found if you let the zombies spawn and run into the quick revive area and shoot them with the MPL, not only did it allow a player to play faster, but it was also much safer and allowed for more consistent horde ups. This new strategy paved the way for high rounds on 5, but it came with a cost, at least for Goldbox. You see, Goldbox aired so many times, he would take a year break before playing zombies again. It wasn't until December of 2014, Goldbox would finally come back and attempt to break the Kino record, which was now 220. After just a few attempts, he would reach round 201, which ended due to a power outage. No matter what Goldbox did, he could not break a record. Everything was against him. However, instead of becoming unmotivated, Goldbox became motivated. The reason for this is because, well, Goldbox was a very determined player, but it also had to do with a somewhat new way of running the fire trap strategy. This strategy was very similar to the way King Jack ran his version back in 2013. However, instead of standing near the MPL window, a player would stand in between the chair in a metal object. This gave the player enough room to not take damage from the fire trap and also allowed zombies from the MPL window to run into the fire trap. Consequently, you would play faster as more zombies ran into the fire trap, although it wasn't perfect. You see, most players would play with an upgraded thunder gun. Obviously, this would make the game safer as they had more ammo but it would also create Nova Crawlers, which were a pain in the ass to deal with. Because the Nova Crawlers crawled, they were significantly slower than normal zombies. Not only did this make games slower, but it arguably made them more difficult, as players would sometimes struggle with hoarding up the zombies, thanks to the crawlers. Because of how annoying the Nova Crawlers were, many players tried to find workarounds and see if you could play without them. After some testing, they did in fact find out. The way you could play with Node Novas is by activating power and not going into certain rooms, such as a spawn room. Although, there was one problem. A very useful perk called Quick Revive is located in the spawn room. That means you can only buy the perk when the power is off. Essentially, you can only play with one down throughout the entire game and your thunder gun cannot be upgraded is the only way to link the teleporter and activate it is through the spawn room. This is a very big price to play just so you can play faster. Although Globox didn't care if it was a big price to play. The record was now 220 and at the time nobody had ran no novas to reset. So he started grinding. It wasn't until nearly half a year later Goldbox would finally get a good run going. In reality, it was so good, he ran no Novas to reset and achieved round 226, a new world record. Furthermore, Goldbox peaked at 554 viewers when he reached round 220, 
which was mind-boggling for him considering how small the high round community was and still is to this day. Goldbox quite literally broke the community with how impressive this record was, and also showed what was possible in COD Zombies. In fact, some might argue this record is what started the modern speedrunning era of COD Zombies. Both old and new players had to find new strategies and time saves to even have a chance at beating the 226. However, there was some community backlash, not specifically with the speedrunning aspect, but more about Goldbox's 226 game. You see, Goldbox accidentally activated a glitch, which skips around on Kino de Toten on round 123. The way this happens is by entering the fire trap room as the round is transitioning. Obviously, this glitch, as well as many other glitches within zombies, are not allowed for record attempts. However, Goldbox left one zombie on round 224 and waited 22 minutes before ending the round to make up for the round 123 skip. This is why the record is so controversial. Some still consider this record unlegit, as he did not follow the rules for zombie records, while some have argued it should count as he waited 22 minutes to make up the round 123 skip. Either way, it doesn't really matter what people think. The fact this game practically revolutionized zombie speedrunning, and it's still in the top 10 highest rounds achieved on this map nearly 8 years later, is nothing short of amazing. As incredible as this accomplishment was, Goldbox was far from being done. Just a few months later, Goldbox would theorize ways to play a map called Ascension. The reason he did this is so he and other players could have a chance at beating the record, which is round 213 at the time. This is arguably one of the most optimized records in Zombies, and the only way to beat it was to somehow get luckier or use a different strategy. Instead of praying for good luck, Magic Goldbox would dig up an old strategy named Trade Strat and would improve it a significant amount. Before he made his improvements, people would trade off the Thunder Gun for more ammo while they ran the trap strategy. Instead, Goldbox would not use traps and would only use a Thunder Gun for the entire game. On paper, this sounds like a terrible idea because he would have to rely on getting lucky from the mystery box so he can get a new thunder gun. And that is a very good point. Although, instead of running the trap strategy, he would run the pack-a-punch strategy. The way this strategy works is a player stands in the pack-a-punch room, waits roughly 3-5 to five seconds for the zombies to spawn, and walks out of the room to hoard up the zombies in the rocket room. Once they hoard up the zombies, a player will shoot their thunder gun and run back into the pack-a-punch room to repeat the strategy. This was a fairly simple but extremely fast strategy. To understand just how fast this strategy was, every time Goldbox killed a horde of zombies with a thunder gun, he would save 10 seconds over the trap strategy. So this begs the question. If you could save 10 seconds for every horde of zombies you killed, how come almost no one switched to it right away? Well, as good as the strategy was, it had some downsides. First, Goldbox was one of only a few who could consistently run this strategy past round 100. Also, it was very luck based. Even though you could save a significant amount of time with average thunder gun luck, it was fairly common for players to get bad luck as well. This caused many players to become unmotivated to run the strategy, and lastly, there were still some improvements that could be made to the trading aspect of the strategy. You see, it's fairly easy to lose a lot of time if you're not hitting the mystery box instantly. Any second you don't hit it will result in a massive time loss throughout a 70 plus hour game. Thankfully, Goldbox was able to solve these issues within just a few months, but that still didn't convince enough people to run it. The only way he could was achieving an absurdly fast round 100, which at the time was 7 hours and 14 minutes. But just 3 months later, that would change. On January 12th, 2016, Goldbox uploaded a new round 100 speedrun world record, with the time of 6 hours and 33 minutes. 
absolutely destroying the previous record and also making this the first ever sub 7 hour round 100 in Black Ops 1. There really isn't much to say about this record besides the fact it broke the zombies community once again. Not only did Goldbox prove just how good of a player he is, but he also showed how viable Trade Strat was for high rounds. In fact, just a year and a half later, a player named Nuker would become the first person to ever run Trade Strat and break the high round record with it by achieving round 221, eventually downing 60 hours in, which was roughly 6 hours off the reset at the time. This meant a player could reach round 230 at the very least with Trade Strat, completely revolutionizing Ascension and also another map named Doris. Unfortunately, only a few players would use Trade Strat on this map during 2016 and 2017, these two players being named Sluya and Crumpets. But that would quickly change in 2018 with a new player named Fleur who made it his main mission to use Trade Strat all the way up until Reset. Unfortunately, he would have two games that tied the world record, which was 232 at the time. But in July of 2019, he would achieve a round of 246, a 14 round improvement from the previous record. And this was all thanks to Glowbox. The fact he was able to completely change two map strategies and also show the community what was possible is incredible considering this was all discovered by just one man. And the best part about all of this is he still wasn't done. Just four months later in April of 2016, Gobox would run a strategy named Semtex on a map called Shangri-La. This is arguably one of the most difficult strategies in Black Ops 1 and he reached the first round 100 with the strategy and also broke the 100 speedrun record. This made the strategy more popular and people wondered if you could run it all the way up until reset. That's when Crumpets came along and broke Goldbox's record a year later by achieving a time of 7 hours and 16 minutes. Once again, making the strategy even more popular. So much so that a few players would attempt getting the Shangri-La high round record with this strategy. Unfortunately, it wouldn't happen until 4 years later with HGM Rick's round 208 game, but it really just shows you Goldbox was way ahead of his time. Hell, just 3 years later, Goldbox would find a new insta-kill strategy on another map named 5. This new strategy would be named Stakeout Instas. The way this strategy worked is a player uses an upgraded version of a wall weapon named the Stakeout and would stand in the elevator which leads to the basement. This was roughly 4 seconds faster than the previous insta-kill strategy and finally allowed players to have a chance at reaching round 240 plus. Eventually, this did happen and a player by the name of Jermaine Cubes reached round 241 on December 23rd, 2021, just two years after Stakeout Instas was discovered. And lastly, Globox would find a new way of running Dat Strat in February of 2022. Dat Strat is a nearly 9 year old strategy found on Verrucked and is widely considered the most difficult strategy to run in Black Ops 1. The way the strategy works is a player stands in the kitchen room with the door to the power closed. The player then waits roughly 3 to 5 seconds for the zombies to spawn and will run towards a trap located near the Thompson wall by. They will then activate the trap to let the zombies die and then run back to the kitchen, wait another 3 to 5 seconds, run through the trap to let the zombies die again. Once that happens, the trap will turn off and needs to wait roughly 25 seconds for it to recharge. So, to combat this issue, a player will have to hoard up the zombies in the speed cola room until the trap is ready to be turned on again. On paper, this sounds somewhat simple, but it is absurdly difficult because of the hoard up. The area in which the player has to train in is very cramped and sometimes a zombie will glitch and get stuck on the speed cola door. If this happens, the chance of a player going down is absurdly high. So, to combat this issue, Goldbox found a new way of doing the hoard up. 
Instead of training in the speed cola room, he found if you rebuild one of the windows near the trap and train in this room, it was significantly safer and more consistent to hoard up the zombies. Also, with some testing from other players, they found you could run this strategy at 26.5 seconds per hoard, which is nearly a second faster compared to the original version of Dad Strat. So, if this new version of Dat Strat is safer and faster, what does that mean for the future of Verruckt? Well, a player could theoretically reach round 220 plus with this strategy, although since it's the hardest strat in the game, the chances of that happening are very slim. However, there's no denying that Globox changed his strategy for the better. He quite literally made the strategy go from impossible to somewhat impossible. Not only that, he found and improvised strategies that push COD Zombies to its limits. So much so, some might argue he made the game into a competitive speedrun. So, if someone asks you, who was the most influential Zombies player, maybe try to consider Globox as number one. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, I would highly consider checking out Goldbox for the influence and change he's had on the high round community. Also, I would really appreciate it if you considered subscribing, as there's many more videos you might like, such as videos on players, strategy guides, and world record histories. Other than that, take care, and have a good rest of your day.